What's going on folks? Welcome back to another episode. We got a very exciting episode for you guys because we're gearing up to do our very first duck hunt here at the farm. We're at the farm. You guys have been seeing the building series. We did a whole video building the pond, a whole video flooding the pond, and now, well, we're going to go scout. Um, we're here late, late morning. I mean, there, I doubt there's many birds. I didn't want to get here right at sunrise because we want to run the tank around a little bit and kind of, we're not really scouting for birds. I'm pretty confident there's going to be birds, but we haven't been here for a few days. Um, as you guys know, we built a leaky pond and we want to see how much water is left. It, luckily, it's been raining for the last few days, so I think it should be, honestly, it might be higher than when we left it, uh, but we're not sure. So we're going to go out there and give it a scout. But I have a big announcement. Now, I've announced it on social media, but if you don't follow me on any of that and you only watch YouTube videos, I am giving away the infamous, the legendary, my baby, the tank. This thing, if you guys are new, it is an eight-wheel amphibious. That's a big word for me. That means it can go on land and in water. It floats. There's literally a mounting bracket for a motor. We've put a motor on it. You can usually, usually, you can literally use it as a boat. Um, you can use it as a four-wheeler, uh, off-road vehicle, mud, water. I mean, you guys have seen me use it. I bought it because we had the big flood down here, and this is the only vehicle that can literally, it's all-terrain. When you talk about all-terrain, you're talking about one of these guys. You can take it in the lake, in the marshes, in an ocean if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend that, but you can. Um, gravel, dirt, mud. It does, literally, you you, you basically can't get this thing stuck. It's pretty impossible to. If you get stuck, you're probably in a spot you probably shouldn't be in. But it's an absolute freaking beast. It's got headlights on it. Not that that's like super special, but it does. Uh, like I said, it's eight wheels. It floats. We got bench seat, bench seat. You can fit like six people in it. Uh, if you're like I said, if you're new to the channel, that's what it is. If you guys are not new, you've I'm, you've definitely already seen this. We've made tons and tons of videos. We've taken it hunting. We've taken it fishing. Everything. But I'm giving it away now. You guys might be wondering, well, how do I win such an insane vehicle that's never been given away before to anybody? This thing, I'm giving giving it away and all you got to do is sign up for the duck shirt of the month club now if you don't know what that is basically we designed a super dope shirt very very cheap it's the, it's the cheapest t-shirt you can possibly get on the website it's almost half the price of our normal t-shirts and it's a subscription so every single month we send you a brand new t-shirt and it's like I said it's, it's cheap it's the least expensive shirt that we have on the website and it's an exclusive design so we don't sell it nobody else can get it the only people that can get that specific design and we we put so much time and effort into these designs making them super dope for you guys that are a part of the club and part of the subscription it's super exclusive so the only way that you can get that specific shirt and it's a new one every single month is by being a part of the duck shirt of the month club and how you enter is by being a part of it so every single month that you're a part of it is one entry so if you sign up today and you stay signed up for the next three months then you get three entries to win this bad boy so the longer you're subscribed the better your chances ducks we've given away two boats in the last year every year we've given away something we gave away a boat last year we gave away a boat the year before that and i was like man i kind of want to step this thing up i want to step it up i want to give some Something to somebody that no one else has given away. No one's given away this before. And most people don't even know something like this exists. Like boats are cool, but what if you, you know, what if you hunt on land? What if you hunt in a really shallow marsh like we're hopefully gonna do tomorrow? This is the deal. Like you guys, you don't even have to, you know, hunt water to use this thing. You could take this thing on the high. Well, it, maybe you get it registered and take it on the high, but like you get what I'm saying. It can do it all. It's better than a four-wheeler and it's better than a boat. It is all that into one. It is over twenty thousand dollar value. I paid like twenty three five for this thing. It's a ton of money, but I wanted wanted you guys to win it um and so that's how you do it duck shirt of the month so i'll leave the link down in the description if you guys want to go check it out go sign up for the shirt of the month like i said the longer you're signed up every month you're signed up is an additional entry to win you're automatically entered if you sign up for the duck shirt of the month so with that being said we're gonna jump in it we're gonna head to the pond and see how much water we're dealing with is there any birds around kind of scout for a spot tomorrow and then pool jet it's you and me buddy and maybe my dad my dad might show up as well uh he said he wanted to hunt so i always like hunting with him so we're gonna hopefully go you know if it looks good i'll tell him hey it should be good he can come out and hopefully we clap some duck cheese in the A. And with that being said, see you guys at the pond. Oh, there's one right there. Look at that. That's a blue wing. Oh my gosh, dude, it's dry. Yeah, you see that? Whoa, it was sitting on land though. Was that not sitting on land? That's dry. Dude, it has dropped so much. Oh my gosh. So when we left this, what was that? Frog, maybe? When we left this, there was probably, I mean, this was probably what, like almost waist, like two and a half feet. And I can see the bottom right here. That had like a foot in it. And that's where the thing, I mean, I guess that we just saw a bird there. So that's not a bad thing. If, you know, they might, they must like it. But I would say the water's dropped at least a full two feet in the last week or so. However long it's been since we flooded. I don't even remember what day we did that. So that's not good. We are honest, we were planning on hunting. So, oh, the corn's definitely dry then. It has to be dry at this point. The corn, we only had like a foot in. That was the highest ground. So let's go. We're going to go look at the corn. We were planning on hunting by the corn. I mean, ducks love corn. 
corn. Uh, but we might have to come up with a plan B. There is there is water here. This is where Jake trenched it, um, which is why he did that, to make sure we have water here. So like, although that's a little sliver of water, I mean, the birds will still hang out there. But then on the other side, there should be still a little bit. Kind of a bummer though, I'll be honest with you. I was expecting, after the rain, I was expecting a full pond where we could go sit in the flooded corn and, and shoot birds, but I don't think it's gonna happen. So let, we'll, go, we'll go look at the corn. Maybe there's still water some for some crazy miracle reason, but we got a leaky pond, like a really leaky pond. Well, folks, well, I mean, there's water right there. That's, what do you think? Probably, I mean, honestly, dude, we're talking like, I don't even think it's a foot. And this was probably pushing three. So we, like I said, we lost about two feet. There is water right there, which the nice thing about teal is they don't, I mean, they, they don't mind water, like a lot of water, but they, they kind of like that marshy stuff. So like, even though that looks dry, there might be water. It's just maybe sitting, it might just be sitting below the grass to where you can't like physically see it. Cause right now it looks bone dry besides that one spot. This is still wet. Like, you can see the, the trench, which again, like ideally if we would have made this like twice as wide, it probably would have helped or at least like cut a channel here, which I mean, uh, if we got like a long reach excavator, we might be able to, but either way, we're gonna, we're gonna go, I can already tell the corn, <laughs> it looks dry from here. <sighs> Man, I thought we were pond experts, but what do you do? We got, I mean, we have some water. It's not completely, completely dry. I mean, like I said, we already saw a teal. We saw a blue wing, so that's a good sign. It's where I'm gonna, actually, I'll cut through here. Let's see how much water's here in this marsh. See how much water's in the corn. And then on the right side is where I took a lot of dirt with the skid loader and built the dam up like on day one, the original building video. So like that was a little bit lower. So that should still have water, hopefully. Um, that's where we took Millie and Lucy that one day when we were working with them, training them and stuff like that. So let's go see how much water's over here. Oh yeah, I mean this isn't terrible. Oh wow, this is actually pretty deep. Why does it smell like booty cheeks? It does, they got that eggy smell, guy. You rip or no? No. Really? Stinky marsh. This is great. Uh, the only problem is there's way too much grass, but like the water held, honestly. It's, there's plenty of water. The corn still looks dry, but this is, so we cut these channels here with the skid loader. I didn't cut it. I didn't cut it down enough. So I don't know, like you can run it over with the tank and it helps, but it's still, it's like, we, we'll be good next year. Like, you know, when when all this is, all the cut stuff dies off and, and, and stuff like that will be fine. But man, we've got, this water's plenty. Just the grass is too thick. And I know the birds, the, the, the teal will like living here and eating all the plants and all the seeds and stuff. So we have like wild millet growing, but I feel like it's gonna be hard to get them to decoy to land in grass. I've never seen a bird land in grass. I've seen them land in water and swim into the grass. I've never seen them land in grass. So I don't think we're gonna be hunting in the middle. Um, I don't think we're hunting the corn either, but that's what we're gonna check out next. <laughs> Just as I suspected. Dry as a freaking bone. This is where I was gonna hunt. Right where, the, right where the tank is was gonna be all the decoys. I mowed it all down. If you guys saw those videos, we mowed all this down. Dry. Corn is completely dry. Son of a gun. We tried so hard on this pond. Man, a little depressing. I do see some water over there, which is good. But I mean, that's like a tenth of the pond. Like our pond, I would say this is probably four acres of water maybe. I'm thinking about my pond that's like two and a half, maybe like three, like a three acre pond. And that, that's about a quarter acre, half acre. But they, I mean, like this is water in front of us. Like I said, the, luckily, again, luckily this isn't for big ducks for teal. The teal don't mind uh, shallow water, but we're not gonna be hunting in the corn tomorrow. So we're gonna check this last spot. This corner is about my only hope for any, any decent water for us to hunt in. baby Yee! we're doing i mean pretty much the same as that trench probably not quite a foot eight inches maybe i'm looking for i don't see any ducks flying around this is it though so now you guys can see that i mean that's quite a, it's plenty see the tractor's still there from us pumping it uh but this is it's plenty for teal again for big ducks i would like to have a little bit more but the, the, the water is in that grass it's just like this but i didn't cut that grass because i got stuck and i got scared and i didn't want to keep going but i mean this is plenty of water again we don't get to hunt that beautiful corn over there that we got planted but i mean honestly i think i I've, i have hunted some very skinny shallow sketchy looking water for teal and done really well before they're kind of like the i mean i would consider them pretty easy compared to mallards mallards sometimes could be not 
that they're like really that difficult but like i said teal literally just need a little moisture they got they got like this much water and some food and stuff they're down they're pretty stupid too like i've i've you know don't really hunt in blinds for teal so that makes it a little bit easier this is definitely enough water so i would say tomorrow this is probably my guess i don't know if we might sit there if there's a south wind we might sit there if it's a north or i mean we could always sit in that tall grass which i mean that's kind of nice we left it tall so we could hide it in it or you could sit against the bank, like up against there and shoot this way. I don't think there's supposed to be much wind tomorrow. There's not much wind today and it's supposed to be pretty warm and sunny the rest of the week. So I'm not thinking it's gonna be too uh, too crazy um, wind or anything. Sometimes you gotta play the wind. It, uh, again, teal, I, they never follow the wind pattern. Like mallards will land into the wind. Teal are like yeet and just like swoop in wherever. A lot of, a lot of passing shots and stuff like that. So, I mean, it could have been worse. It definitely could have been better. I had, I, had, I had high expectations. I thought for sure the pond was going to be just as high as the last time we left it because we've had so we had like three inches of rain the last week. It's just absolutely unreal that we lost this much water. But I would say if we don't, if, if it stays like this for teal season, I think we'll be okay. Um, I don't know what the strat's going to be for big duck. I might look into trying to buy or build or whatever, install a well as well as like a pump. That's I mean, that's what most people do uh, when they want to flood a property. They don't get a tractor and, and that type of deal because it's kind of a pain. Um, it's probably pretty expensive to do it. I think the pump alone is like $4,000, um, but we might not have an option. I mean, it's it, duck hunting's not a cheap sport unless you, I mean, if you want to go public land, which I mean, I, I grew up on public land. I didn't own any land up until two years ago, but something about having your own property and managing it, it's, it means something to me. It's special to me. So I, I want to keep the investment going. I already bought the property. I already put the money into building, you know, the pond and stuff like that and making it all work so we might have to bite the bullet folks all right and and install a well and a pump I don't, I, we do have a well in this property i don't know if it's working so if we have a well that'll save me a bunch of money but the pump i think is still a few thousand dollars so for big duck that might be the strat uh we still have a few weeks until then but for teal this actually looks pretty good so i'm, I'm just giving you guys an update scouting wise we saw one if we shoot one tomorrow i'll be happy i'll take one i'll take one at this point if we take if we get zero i'll be pretty bummed i mean it's been tons of manpower and labor to get mainly from jake uh to get this thing going and i'm gonna try i try to convince jake to come tomorrow he says he's busy he ain't busy he's lying but um maybe if we shoot a bunch of birds tomorrow that'll convince him to go again so we're gonna try to get jake out here since he put in all a ton of work to get this to work and like i said the census is holding some water i think we're gonna shoot some so with that being said we'll see you guys tomorrow Morning, folks. We made it out to the marsh, as you guys saw. Uh, we're dealing with a lot less water, so we're kind of hunting in that one spot that we showed you guys. The, the basically, it's honestly it's where I took a lot of the dirt for the dam with the skid loader way, way back in the first log. Luckily, I did it because this actually held. This is the only spot that held water, and then the trench that Jake dug held water. But I think the birds are gonna like this because there's a lot more grass and stuff. We're we're pretty bummed that this didn't hold water. There a lot of work, time, and effort went into this. And uh, I thought with the water table being so high, I mean, it's just, it's already naturally moist ground. It would hold, but we're just, we're not good pond builders, but we're going to give her heck. So we've got two dozen teal decoys, two spinners, and then these little uh, spinning flashing disc things that I'll show you guys in a bit. So we're going to get loaded up right now. We've got like 45 minutes before we can shoot. So we're, we're hoping the teal come in. This is like I said, it's been a lot of work. If we can have a good teal season, I'll be content. Uh, I'm not too positive about the big duck season with the, you know our water levels fluctuating so much, but we'll see how it goes. You guys stay tuned. Beauty. Look at that. Oh yeah. So then we've got these things too. Watch these things. Watch these things. It seems so stupid, but it flashes and it looks just like teal kind of running around. So we've got six of those, pumper, and then we got two spinners as well. Two dozen decoys. So one thing I like about teal, it's usually pretty simple uh, gear. You don't have to gear up too big. So we're gonna get the spinning wings out and hide the old tank and see what happens. Oh yeah. All right, we'll go park the tank. Well, folks, we're a couple minutes from shooting time. We're shooting these little guys, little stubbies, okay? These are two and three quarter, six steel shot. Very important when you're waterfowl hunting. But we were watching these birds and with how close they are to us. I mean, we're talking 20 yard shot. Uh, I had three inch threes packed uh, for the public hunting that we've been doing because you're taking some far shots sometimes, passing shot. I think we'd kind of, uh, we might tenderize the meat a little bit, I guess, if we're using those. So we're, we're starting off with a couple light shots. I am a little bit worried. This gun, I should have uh, sprayed it. I don't know if these are gonna have enough kick 
to cycle, so it might not. So if you see me switch back to the three inch, that's why. But we've got two minutes. We've seen hundreds of birds. As depressing as it was not seeing the water in here, they do really like this spot. We've had tons and tons of teal land in here. So we're getting, as you can tell, it's bright outside. I know you can't shoot until sunrise. So we're gonna give it a, give it a couple more minutes. And we should be we should be lighting up. I think we're gonna get a quick limit here. I don't think it's gonna take too long for us to, to shoot our birds. We can get 18, 18 total. So it should be fun. You guys stay tuned. Hey, get up! There you go. There we go. That's two right there. Easy peasy. Shoot him. Yep. There you go. That was a good one. All right. Good shot. Puff that guy. That was with the sixes. Yep. Yeah, you puffed him. I'd, you want to go grab that one? I'll, I'll keep an eye out. There we go, baby. It started off pretty quick. I mean, so many birds came in before we could shoot. It's been kind of slow. Uh, that's three down. I've got two. My dad's got one. Uh, but they, they keep landing on that back trough that, that uh, Jake dug, if you guys remember that, the big sliver on the other side. So they've, they've been landing over there. So if they keep doing that, we might have to go and uh, shoot them on that side. We're not sure, but so far we got three. <laughs> That would be three for me. That was a whack one, huh? He like came at me. I was gonna shoot him high. He came at me and swooped back down. See, now I'm glad I threw the old threes in because that was a, that was a far shot on that guy. Heck yeah, baby. Shoo! Here we go. That's the old first one right there, baby. We're up to four now. Shoo! That's five, dude. <laughs> the accuracy today is decent. Yeah. Well, folks, that's seven. Um, I'm up to five. My dad's got two, and uh, it's slowed up quite a bit. But we're still getting a couple, couple to fly in. We've decided now to kind of sit down. It's, it's actually really nice. It's like this much water, so I'm just we're sitting down up against the the dam here. And the sun is actually perfect. Cause it's coming over our back, so the birds are not going to see us for quite some time. But slow and steady. If we were able to shoot 30 minutes before sunrise, I would say we'd be limited by now. It just it seems especially for like teal season. I mean teal season, you can't you have to shoot at sunrise. Normal ducks, uh, it's 30 minutes before in some states some you got to read your regulations don't go off of what i'm saying you got to read your state's regs but here you can only shoot till sunrise or at sunrise so it's uh it's a little frustrating watching the birds fly that early but the reason they do that so you don't shoot the wrong species you get a better eye for it um there's a lot of wood ducks shovelers and stuff that migrate with teal so you want to make sure you're, you're only shooting teal during teal season but so far we got seven not bad <laughs> yep 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 That's it. That's the limit there, boys. Woo! I got six, son. Pull it. It's your turn, buddy. Oh, yeah. There you go, buddy. That's six. Oh, I'm limited out. Finally. It took, it took an hour for me to limit it. It should have been done a lot sooner. But as soon as that sun got up, they really stopped kind of flying around. But there we go. Another blue, another blue wing. Pull Jet's turn to shoot a couple. He's on the right, right, right. In front, 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 front. Shoot him. There you go. It's close. It wasn't quite on your I side want to though. Shoot right in your ear. No, I, I like that. That's actually <laughs> I that, felt bad that's for fun. You. No, you did good. You he he is he's kind of new to duck hunting. That's good. That's good. Uh, finger trigger discipline. A lot of guys were taking that shot. That was good. That was good call, not shooting. Why? Well, thank you. It was. It, I mean, now I shot across my lane today. I, I'll admit that too. Like the the second bird I shot was kind of on my dad's side, and I just was I say trigger happy and going, but you did the right thing. You waited, and then my dad got. So he's. He's retrieving that guy. That would be number nine. Just a little single guy. That guy circled like three times too. He went in there, he went over there, he went back behind us over the riverbed and then back through, so. There we go, that's number nine right there, baby. Kill him. Oh, he's one right here. There's one on this back side. you got two. Good shooting there, boys. Did you get yours? Was yours a far one or a short one? Uh, mine was the short one. The short one? Yeah. So there's one, one on this other side. He might be a cripple. Yours is right there, Ty. Good job, dude. That was a massive group. Yeah. I, it was one of those like, we could have waited for one more. We could have waited for one more pass, but I was just worried they would have dipped. That was, that was tough. That was a massive group, like an absolute massive group of birds. That was like probably 15 to 20 of them. Biggest one we've had yet. They worked good. We had one land in the decoys. The boys had great discipline waiting and we ended up getting two out of it. Really tough shot, so super high and far. It's like a mid-morning flight. You got that guy? I got that one, and then Ty got his. That was good. I wish they would have stayed a little bit lower. I think the boys would have gotten a lot more of them, but hey, two is not too bad. Better than the one.
we made it back, folks. Well, we picked up the birds. We ended up with a total of 12. We're gonna try something. Uh, I don't honestly don't remember if we did it last year, but we're gonna do it again. Um, but we got this new grill. Okay, you guys seen this? This is the old Hibachi 3000. Dude, this thing's on low. Absolutely just giving it heck. It is ripping right now. I don't know. This might be getting too hot. But we're gonna try to do teal and eggs, like steak and eggs, teal and eggs. We, we I literally took one teal bird and put the rest in the freezer because we're not gonna make that much. But we're like, well, while we're making breakfast, we hadn't eaten yet. We're gonna go ahead and make pancakes and we have bacon. So we're gonna go all out. Since we got this big griddle, I feel like it's only fitting to just go absolutely obnoxious amount of food since you're able to cook so much on this thing. So we're gonna start off with two cups of mix right there. And then you need, really, one and a half cups of water. That's actually a lot more than I thought they would actually call for. So go ahead and give her the old one cupper. Give her the old, probably about half her. Mix it up. I mean, I can tell based off consistency what we need, to, what the strat is, if we need more or not. But so we're going to get that on there, throw it on, and see see what it ends up looking like. This griddle might be too hot. I, it's literally on low, but it, it gets after. So we're going to go ahead and mix up the pancakes, and then we're going to start throwing the bacon on, and then we're going to chop up the teal breast, mix it in with some scrambled eggs, and see if it's good. I mean, steak and eggs is a thing, so we figured it's probably somewhat similar. It looks pretty good. I might. I kind of like making my pancakes a little bit thinner or less, sorry, more runny, less thick. Um, it tends to spread better when you drop it down and it'll end up cooking them faster and more, you, you get less doughy. You ever have a doughy pancake? No one likes a doughy pancake. So I like it a little bit runnier. I think I have better success cooking them, especially with this high of a heat. I don't think we can deal with the thickness. Oh yeah, that's, that's the strap. She's mixed up. That's gonna be a lot of pancakes. Hopefully you're hungry. Give her one of these guys. That's gonna be the pancake side. And let's see how hot this thing is. Oh yeah. I like cooking on this thing. You can cook just an obnoxious amount of food. All right, we'll start with three, just in case the griddle is too hot, too cold. Pancakes are kind of a finesse, a finesse food, uh, cooking wise. It it it's a kind of a little bit of an art to get. But we've got some premium hickory smoked bacon. It's delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and do do the bacon on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank the heat up. All right, so I'll turn it up just because I want the bacon to be going pretty warm. This is the good stuff. Nothing beats a nice big breakfast after duck hunt. We've we've thought about taking this whole grill out to the marsh and cook. If you guys like that idea, let me know. Oh, it must not be that, oh, it's sizzling. So it must not be that hot because usually when I throw bacon in the pan, it's ripping. I mean, the pancakes seem to be actually cooking okay. I thought the griddle was gonna be too hot for it. Yeah, thick. This guy don't know how to measure thick. This is like a half a C thick. I mean, it's, it looks like it's good bacon, but I wanted some of that good thick stuff on there. Kind of wimpy bacon, not gonna lie. But Jimmy Dean, I'll forgive you. Oh yeah. How many, how many strips did it say? 78 or something that it could fit? It was some wild number, wasn't it? I don't know if about these guys. These are 72 eggs. I don't know about. 48. I think it was 40, 48 bacon. So we're going to go. Why is that so long? Look at that. It's like a foot long piece of bacon right there, buddy. I don't know. what. Why is this? What's the strat? I don't get it. Yeah, we might as well throw the whole pack on at this point. We're already this deep. All right, we got one more piece. These are heck right there. All right, bacon done. That's good. Pancakes. Ooh, ooh. I'm starting to see a couple bubbles. I don't think they're going to be done yet. No, nope, nope. They're, they're light. I'll turn it up just a hair, okay? All right, I'll move this bacon. Oh, all right, guess your bacon's just gonna stay there. So, uh, eggs, eggs and teal. So, literally, I got one teal breast. I figured that's gonna be enough. We got only got five eggs right now. So, we're gonna slice this up. I'll be back. All right, we got our, we got our cutting board. We might have to give it one of these, but. All right, we got a knife. Millie, you excited? Hey, no dog out. All right, we might just. This is just, wait, you're just asking for a problem here. Now I understand why people like half kitchens, you know? Dude, cooking in your garage isn't really that easy. Oh, this has to be good. Oh, a little, little premature, let her eat for a bit. All right, yeah, set her down right there, Ricky. There we go, Lucy, 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 Lucy. All right, so this is the teal. I'm gonna do little strips. They're gonna cook real fast on this too. Just small little nugs is all you're you're wanting here. Millie, did you get that? Hey, can, excuse me. We don't need puppy flavor. Can, hey, Rick, Rick. I know you're pissed. We didn't take you. All right. Hey, Ricky, Ricky. Hey, get get back, get back. All right. How's this pancake looking? Oh yeah. Decent. Not amazing. Kind of looks like cheeks, but it's decent. Take the meat. Slap it on that grill. 
it's going to cook really fast. All right. Oh, that looks pretty good, honestly. It looks like a little steak bite. So I'll cook the meat first. That way you know your meat is cooked before you add the eggs. So we'll let that give it heck real quick. What's this guy doing? No, oh, that's not bad. Okay. All right. I mean, they don't look that great, but they're 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 doing a pancake thing. They're looking pretty good. So yeah, I vote next time we like get a table set up, so I don't, I'm not freaking out like this. But so like I said, we're gonna do teal and eggs. We're gonna do scrambled eggs. Go ahead and crack them all in a bowl. There we go. Give the eggs the old whiskey. Usually I throw a splash of milk in there, but I'm definitely just too lazy to go walk in there and do that. All right, those are done. Eggs going in hot, baby. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The old spat. Get one of these guys, you know what I'm saying? Just mix it all in. Hey Rick, come back here. Come back here, eggs. Yeah, I don't know. It really ran. I mean, it, it, it'll be fine. They look good. Yeah, they look really good, actually. These guys are... Oh, they're not bad. Mm. Oh, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Why is this bacon taking forever? That's the real question here. This eggs look really good. You gonna eat the teal and eggs? No. Really? I'll be honest, you're not the best at scrambled eggs, but... What the hell, man? We're good. I need to throw some more pancakes on the griddle, though. How's this going? Yeah! Bacon's getting it. It's good. Oh, yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, I, I like cooking in the kitchen. This thing's cool, but like, it's a freaking disaster out here. Well, if you're trying to make this many things at one time, it's just it's getting a little chaotic. Just got a few more cakes and well, we're gonna be eating breakfast. Well, folks, made it inside. It is time to give this the old taste test. I'm starting off with the, the good stuff here. This is the teal with the eggs. You know, that griddle, it seems cool, but I probably could have cooked this same meal in half the time and done it better on a stove top. I'm just not used to that strap, but here we go. Teal and eggs. Mmm. All right. All right. That was a lot better than I thought it'd be. Not gonna lie. That teal, you, you don't even really taste it. Like, you don't taste the... That piece had a little bit more game to it. It's not bad, though. Decent. All right. I'm gonna go through everything, and then, and then Pool Jet's gonna give it the old, the old taste test and rating here. So the big and out the package was kind of... I mean... Oh, crunchy. It was too thin, man. You know, like paper. I thought it was supposed to be thick bacon. It was labeled thick bacon. I'm telling you, they had like half a C. All right, that little piece, a little nugget I had was pretty good. Let's go, uh, we're gonna dig into these pancakes here. Let's see if the griddle pancakes actually do they, The thing is, what I've noticed, everything I cooked, fit, like physical appearance wise, garbage. Like presentation points, out the window. I don't know how people make the stuff look good that they cook on this. Like, look at this. Look at the uneven cooking. I took, I put them on and took them off at the same time. Super uneven. Uh, so far, I'm really not that impressed with this, this doohickeyed grill that I got. But we're gonna see if this this syrup can save the day here. Mmm. I know I'm pretty hungry, but those slap. Those are those are those are pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I'm not gonna give any credit to the, the griddle because it wasn't really that easy to cook on it. But I mean, I haven't eaten all the morning, and these are. These are hitting the spot right now. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm gonna finish this whole plate. All right. Oh, bacon first. Let's see. Oh that. yeah. But you got that's a less done piece. That's probably a little better. A couple of them got crispy. They're just thin. Just that is really thin. It just, uh, you know. There's not much flavor to it. Nah. It just. I don't it, know if that's the grill or if it's just the bacon. I think I think the bacon's just garbage. That fly mm. likes it, which right. just says a lot about it. Yeah, the bacon in, in general, I think, is pretty garbage. But you're going now. You're going in for the meat, eggs, and the teal. Which, I mean, I'll, actually, I'll let you. I'll let you make give an opinion before I elaborate. That's pretty good. Yeah, not mm -hmm. too bad. Can you can you taste the game at all, or just no. all, really? No, that piece was good. Really. Mm -hmm. Well, I was gonna say like it's it's one of those things like you kind of have to like the game taste a little bit. Like it, it's got a hint. It's not much. And it, like I mean, if you threw some hot sauce in it, if you marinated the steak or the the teal in some like a one or something, something just to give it a little steakish flavor. I don't think you could tell the difference. 
um, eating a piece plain, you get you get a hint of game. So if you like that though, if you don't mind that little hint of game, that is a really really efficient way to get rid of some meat. Do, do you get a little? Yeah, it just depends if there's if there's you know that gamey taste in it. Um, it's a good way to get rid of the meat though. Like you you know you you can only cook duck so many ways but doing something like breakfast and something mixing it in some omelets and scrambled eggs and stuff again we're trying to step up our catch cook game every single video so we're trying to get creative so if you guys have any awesome recipes for waterfowl meat let me know in the comment section down below but pool jet he's spreading that butter on that cake he's getting that syrup drizzled on it and we're said these are good we're both hungry and so i think you're i think you're going to give it a positive review but i could be wrong i don't think any of them are, are doughy they look fluffy light and fluffy airy Pretty fluffy. i think the griddle actually did decent with the pancakes that might be like the one thing that it it, it excels is at the rest not not too impressed with it some it some, some ihop some denny's it's level pretty good, yeah. pretty good you're also hungry uh, well true so but. i i'm i'm hungry too so just everything tastes a little bit better after long hunt but not bad i will say the eggs and teal are better than i thought there's been a couple pieces in there that are a little sketch. Um, they have kind of, that's why I diced them up really small. You can even go smaller. If you made like little bites, it would it would pretty much blend in. But it did taste really good. A little ex extra added protein into the eggs. Bacon, give it like a five out of 10. And I'm blaming the bacon on that, not the griddle. The pancakes, give them like a eight and a half out of 10. Pretty good pancakes, but that griddle cooks pretty uneven. You can't you can't leave them all on the same, for the same time, the same duration like you saw. You get light, medium, and dark all in one, all in one row there. So it's honestly, griddle kind of like me down a little bit but if you guys want to see us tote that thing out to the marsh and do a catch or cook in the marsh imagine i'm like cooking bacon and a teal just rips and you're like Poof! like it'd be kind of sick too like i just i just have the gun strapped and flipping pancakes with one arm just shooting teal with the other if you guys want to see that let me know in the comment section down below and remember if you guys want to win the infamous legendary absolute beast of a tank eight wheel amphibious off-road vehicle called the tank if you guys want to win it all you got is click the link down below go sign up for the ducks shirt of the month and you are automatically entered every single month that you are signed up is an additional entry so go sign up it's super cheap and you get a chance to win the ultimate off-road vehicle and if you want anything else from ducks make sure you use promo code flare because you can get 10 percent off your entire purchase if you want some other stuff at ducks while you're at it use promo code flare get 10 percent off it'll be linked down with you guys want to go check it out thank you so much for peace